welcome to this meditation. This is Rev. Anne Ahokangas, and I will guide you to focus on observing and accepting, and then transforming any stress, pain, or tension, and then focusing your mind in meditation to provide physical and mental relaxation and pain relief. Find a comfortable position, making sure that your back is supported. Laying down or sitting is fine. Take a deep breath in. Hold it for a moment and release. Let's do that again. In, hold, release. Bring your attention from your thoughts to your heart. Allow the thoughts of the day to be set aside as you center in your heart space for a moment. As you settle into a comfortable, relaxed position, just notice how you are feeling in this moment. Without trying to change anything, observe your body and mind. Releasing pain, stress, and tension begins with observation. Where do you notice most of your tension? Do you notice any pain? Where is it located? What part of your body is most relaxed? Take a deep breath in. And now exhale. Breathe in. And let it out. Continue to breathe slowly, smoothly. Now continue the stress relieving relaxation with a peaceful attitude of observing. Do not try to make anything happen. Notice how your whole body feels. Gently observe, not trying to change anything. Simply observe how your body feels. Take a few moments now to think about the pain or stress you experience. You may not be in pain right now. Just observe the state of your pain or stress in this moment. The way your body feels is always changing. The way you feel is different from moment to moment. A moment from now 
you will feel slightly different from the way you feel right now. Just observe. Observe as each moment passes. Even though pain and stress are unwanted and difficult to tolerate, try for the next few moments to regard your pain or stress with acceptance. Accept the way you are feeling right now, physically and emotionally, whether positive or negative. Allow your body and mind to just be. Accepting. Observing. Accepting. Observing. I invite you to repeat some gentle affirmations with me now. I accept myself. I accept myself. I accept this pain or stress I experience. I accept the whole of it. I accept it. Letting go of the need to control or to change in this moment. I accept how I feel in this moment. I release myself from the need to do anything right now, except just be. I love and accept myself. Now that you have repeated some affirmations, just relax for a few moments and let go just be. I'll watch the time. There is nothing you need to be doing in this moment besides accepting this moment just as it is. Take a moment now to observe again your pain, your stress, and notice that you can alter the pain slightly. See if you are able to transform the feeling just a little. Picture the pain or stress. Notice its exact location. Imagine that instead of pain or stress, this area feels cool, even a bit cold, as if you have applied a comfortable ice pack to this area. Feel the coolness. The area might even start to feel a little less cold. 
closer to the way the rest of your body feels. Now focus in on this area and imagine a slightly different feeling of your choice. You may wish to imagine the sensation of pleasant tingling, warmth, or soft but firm, comfortable pressure. Imagine this sensation now. Imagine the sensation replacing just a tiny bit of the pain or stress. A tiny bit more of the pain. More and more. Feel this new sensation growing pleasantly, providing some relief, allowing you to relax. Take a deep breath in and let it out. In and out. In and out. Continue to breathe slowly and rhythmically as you now notice your breathing. Notice your heart center. Imagine your heart is gently breathing in and out. You can choose any phrase you want to focus upon for this portion of the relaxation. This will be your focus word. I'll use the word peaceful. Focus your attention on this word with each breath. Every time your thoughts drift, focus in again on this word. Don't worry about making anything happen or doing this meditation in a certain way. Whatever happens is right for you at this moment. Again, bring your focus back to your breathing. Notice your heart is gently breathing in and out. Choose in this moment to have an attitude of peaceful acceptance. Just accept the state you are in and continue to focus your mind on the word you will be repeating. Notice as your heart is gently breathing in and out. Breathe in. Peace. Breathe out. Full. In. Peace. Out. Full. Peace. Full. Peace. Full. Peace. Full. Peace. Full. Continue to repeat this word in your mind, focusing your attention on this word whenever your thoughts wander. 
notice as your heart is gently breathing in and out. Keep repeating your focus word. When your thoughts drift, focus your attention again on your focus word. Peace. Full. Peace. Full. Focus your mind again on your focus word. As thoughts enter your mind, and they will, just turn your attention back to your focus word. Notice as your heart is gently breathing in and out. Peace. Full. Peace. Full. Peace, full, peace, full. Notice how your body feels. See how relaxed your muscles are. Notice how calm your mind is. Enjoy this feeling of relaxation for a few moments more. Notice as your heart is gently breathing in and out. You can keep this feeling of relaxation with you as you return to your regular day. Complete the peaceful relaxation now. Memorize this peaceful, relaxed feeling, knowing you can return to this state whenever you choose. Notice as your heart is gently breathing in and out. Slowly bring your attention back to the room. Slowly reawaken your body now. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Feel your mind and body becoming more awake and alert. Move your arms and legs and stretch your muscles to let them reawaken from this peaceful relaxation. Sit for a moment now with your eyes open, observing the room around you. When you are ready, return to your usual activities keeping with you this sense of calm and relief.
जान में माने पाद
So welcome to Unity. I'm Reverend Anna Hokangas, and it's my absolute delight to be here with you today. It's always a great day in Unity. So we're going to begin with this song, I Love Myself the Way I Am, by Jay Josephs, and of course, our amazing Emilio Zaris. So join in if you would. Because it's going to be in all five recordings? Yeah, let's do it from the beginning. Okay, so I'm are sorry. you ready? Yeah, I'm ready now. I wasn't sure. You're, you're still recording, right? Yeah. Have you got the title and him on your... your okay, so he can start yes. anytime. Okay. okay. <laughs> are you finished talking? We're all good. I'll always be the perfect me. There's nothing to rearrange. I'm beautiful. I'm capable of being the best me I can. And I love myself just the way I am. myself it's easy to love you behind your fears your rage and tears I see your shining star and I love you just the way you are Because I love myself 
just the way I am So I love you just the way you are And we can love the world just the way it is Cause I love myself just the way I am Isn't that a great song? It is so great to be here with you today. I hope that you enjoy what we have coming up. I know I'm usually the speaker, but today we have a special guest, and you'll find out in a few minutes. So if you're here for the first time, welcome. Please put a comment in the live chat that you're here or in the comment section below. We'd love to get to know you a little bit. Let us know who you are and how you found us, what you thought of the service. And let's begin with something that I love to do, and that is opening intention. So join with me in consciousness for this affirmative prayer. And let's focus on being the peace that we each wish to see in the world. So close your eyes if that's comfortable. And bring your attention down from your head and your thoughts to your heart center. And let's just take a moment to connect with the spirit within, to connect with the peace that abides at the center in our hearts. The infinite mind of God, which is everywhere present, fills my conscious awareness with absolutely everything that I require to be the peace that I wish to see in the world. And I know that it radiates out from me and creates a better world for me and as a consequence for everyone I encounter. I am so grateful to know this truth, to be this truth, and to release this truth, allowing spirit to fulfill its mission through me. I let go and I let it be so. Please join with me in affirming. And so it is. Our next song is my favorites, and it's a fairly new song by Amy Steinberg, Intimate with the Infinite, and Emilio Zaris.
The absolute word today, brought to you by Paul Hasselbeck, is freedom. I experience true freedom as I awaken to my spiritual nature. Today, I stop placing limits on my ability to live the life of my dreams. I start by taking an honest look at what I believe about myself. I know self-awareness leads to self-knowledge. It's important I do this with self-acceptance. I identify false, destructive thoughts. I use denials to disempower these thoughts and sweep them out of my mind. I use affirmations to claim my beautiful divine nature. I revel in true freedom as I embrace my spiritual identity. I soar like an eagle, catching the currents of divine energy. As others see my strength and agility, I effortlessly have affinity for my good. I am limitless. Life becomes sweeter and brighter as I ascend into the new understanding of myself. I become more prosperous, healthy, and happy as I embrace my spiritual truth. And now the song, The Power of One, sung by Emilio Zaris. It's never easy when so much is on the line, but you can make a difference with courage, you can set things right. The and make dreams real is yours and mine the power of one begins with believing it starts in the heart then flows through the soul and takes Just for you, just look inside, you'll be surprised what you can do, the power of one begins with believing, it starts in the heart, then Power of one begins. 
Each of us holds the key to the power of up for a real treat. Today's guest speaker is Esther Nicholson. She's a recovery coach, author, speaker, recording artist. She's the daughter of a Baptist minister, a renowned vocalist. She's a former addict, a teacher, and an author of Soul Recovery, 12 Keys to Healing Dependence. Finally realized, she finally realized, what her healing called her to. And it was a mission worth living for, to unify the 12 steps of recovery with universally accepted spiritual principles. So I hope you enjoy Esther Nicholson. Yeah. 
how good it is, yes? To be able to just go within and reconnect to that essential part of our beingness that is life, that is love, that is God, the authentic self. And that's what I want to speak to you about today, the roadmap home to the authentic self by way of recovery. Not recovery from the perspective of recovering from something, like recovering from some emotional, physical, or, or financial crisis, or recovering from the, the drama and trauma and, and conflicts and all the stuff, the pandemic, everything that's going on in the world today. We're not looking at recovering from anything. I want to talk to you today about the recovery of, the recovery of your essential nature of wholeness, the recovery of that aspect of you that is spoken about in Genesis, where it, it states that God looked around at everything that it had made and called it good and very good. I want you to just look at yourself right now and say, I'm good and very good. I'm good. Many of us have forgotten that, that we're good, that we're there, that we were made in the, that we are made in the image and likeness of goodness, that we are the good itself. It is within us. Many of us have forgotten that. We have become uh, energetically disconnected from this truth. There, there's a story that I just love. It's about this little boy. And I don't know if it's a story. I don't know if it's true, but it, it's, it's, it's really relatable to what we're talking about today. This little boy, two, two or three years old, his mom just had a baby, and he begged his parents, can I just spend just one minute alone with my little baby, with my new baby brother? And the parents finally relented and said, okay, you can spend 60 seconds alone with your baby brother, but we're going to be right outside the nursery, and we're going to be listening in to what it is that you have to say. And so they listen in to what this little boy has to say to his newborn baby brother. And what he says, he says, will you please tell me about God because I'm starting to forget. How many of you have forgotten that you are God, that you are the thing itself in full expression? And so I want to talk about the recovery of that aspect of you today. I want to talk about the recovery of your innate identity of worthiness. I want you to just take a deep breath right now, and I want you to repeat after me and say, I'm worthy. I'm good, and I'm worthy. I can't hear you say that, but I can feel you say that. I can feel you remembering that. I want to talk to you today about the rediscovery of your fierce, dynamic, amazing magnificence as an expression of truth, as an expression of God. You know, there was a time in my life when I thought that being magnificent or being good enough or being worthy had to do with how I looked, how much weight I gained or lost, the kind of makeup I wore. But I've come to realize that as long as I was walking around with those insidious, life-diminishing false beliefs of separation, of shame, of guilt, of blame, of unworthiness, that I couldn't suck it in, tone it up, color it up, no matter how hard I tried, that those illusions made my unconscious decisions without my conscious permission. Let me say that again made my unconscious decisions without my conscious permission. How many times have you done things and you're like, oh my God, what did I just do? Why did I make that decision from that place? Because there's a part of you, that 60% of your subconscious mind, that's running the show without your conscious permission. So what does the illusion of separation look like? What does unworthiness look like? What does it feel like? It looks like you're saying yes when you mean no. It looks like accepting some person, place, experience, condition in your life that you know on a soul level 
is not what you really desire and is not for your highest and best good. But the illusion of unworthiness and separation will lie to you and tell you, yeah, but this is all I could have. And if I don't accept this, then I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out on this opportunity. How many times have you done that? I can remember times in my life when I've done that. Those insidious illusions. And insidious, and I know that you already know this, but I just want to remind myself too. Insidious means subtle and sneaky and under the hood. And in the world of recovery, it means cunning, baffling, and powerful. So this cunning and baffling, powerful dis-ease of the mind, disconnection from the spirit, it looks like having unhealthy boundaries or not having any boundaries at all. That's what that looks like. That's what that feels like. And I can remember many years ago, I was in negotiations with a client on the telephone. And I was having a great day, not a cloud on the horizon. And all of a sudden, my energy just dropped right in the middle of the conversation. I couldn't understand it. It's like, whoa, what's wrong with me? I felt the sick feeling in the pit of my gut. That's usually where my inner child and or my in intuition is telling me, oh, you're off here. Something's not right here. And so I put my hand on my tummy and on my solar plexus and I looked down and I was like, what's the matter, boo? I call myself boo or sweetheart. I was like, what's the matter, sweetheart? And I felt that part of myself say, I'm afraid. I'm scared. I'm afraid to ask this client for what I really want. And it's not a vibrational match for who I really am. So I was feeling the sick feeling in the pit of my gut, not because I was in negotiations with a client, but because the illusion of separation, the illusion of unworthiness and not good enoughness was seeking to negotiate with the absolute truth of my beingness. And it wasn't a match. How many of you felt that before? Well, in this moment, I hit a bottom. I just hit an emotional bottom. It's like, oh my God, I've been doing this all my life, saying yes when I mean no, not speaking up for myself, accepting things in my life that I know in my gut and my soul that I don't really want. And I've hit a bottom and I just can't do it this way anymore. I want you to repeat after me. I can't do it this way anymore. I can't live this way for one more day. Yay. I made that decision that I wasn't going to live that way anymore. But here was the dilemma. I was in a dilemma too. Because I knew I couldn't live that way for one more day. It was so incongruent with who I really was, who I really am. Yet, I didn't feel the confidence or the, the power to not do it that way anymore. I couldn't do it that way anymore. And I didn't feel the power to not do it that way anymore. Many of you may know my story of recovery. I've been in recovery for 34 years. And the basic text of recovery talks about, it states that lack of power is our dilemma. And if I'd had anything to do with the writing of that book many years ago, I would have kind of changed that sentence a little bit. And instead of saying that lack of power is my dilemma, I would have acknowledged that Lack of access to the power is my dilemma. Because when you're hanging out in unworthiness and not enoughness, you don't have access to the power that's operating at the highest frequency that there is because you're operating at this frequency. It's not that the power is not there. You are the power. The power is within you. But if you're blocked from it because of the chronic anxiety, the unworthiness, the not enoughness, then you don't have access to the power. So I felt in that moment, I can't live this way again, but I don't have access to the power to not do this again. So I made a decision in that moment that I was going to go within to my inner sanctuary. 
And I was going to take that roadmap home to my authentic self. I was going to do the work that I want to teach you about. That I, wanted, that I was going to do the work that had come through me so powerfully in, in the last many, many, many years of my recovery. And I sat there in my inner sanctuary and I did that work. I followed that roadmap until I awakened to the power within me. And as I awakened to the power within me, a new thought, a new decision came through me about this particular negotiation. And I decided in that moment to walk away and to leave the deal on the table. You see, sometimes you have to leave the deal on the table. I made a decision in that moment to walk away with nothing because what the faith and the truth that came through me was you're not walking away with nothing because when you walk away with nothing in the name of your self value, in the name of truth, in the name of worthiness, in the name of your true identity as an expression of the divine, that the universe will fill that void with the something that is beyond your wildest imagination. When you walk away from something that is not in alignment, with your spiritual integrity, with your worthiness, with who you are, the universe will fill that void with the something that is beyond your wildest imagination. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I have experienced again and again and again. The universe has never failed me and it will not fail you because it is you. So let me ask you, beloved, what is it costing you every time you say yes when you mean no? What is it costing you to accept situations, experiences, conditions in your life that you know on a deep soul level is not what you really desire? It's not really what you asked for. It's not what you've been praying for. What is it costing you? Is it costing you your dignity? Is it costing you your connection to your inner power? Is it costing you your abundance? Is it costing you your peace of mind? Yes, it is costing you all of that. But fundamentally, rock bottomly, what it's costing you is access. Access to the infinite power that is within you, home, your authentic self. And I think that the cost is too high. Anything that is costing you the authenticity of your beingness, the cost is too high. There are so many of you who've come to me for help, especially during the pandemic and everything that's happening in the world right now. It has re-triggered a lot of unhealed emotions. Yes? And so you're coming to me for help in these one-on-one -on -one sessions with emotional issues, financial issues, relationship issues, health issues, addiction issues. And when we sit together and we unpack what's going on underneath the condition, we invariably find that there is a false belief of unworthiness, of shame, of not enoughness, which is creating in your external world the pain that you are suffering from. How do we heal that? How do, when, you, when you think about it, it's like, God, how long have I been suffering with this? How do we heal that? I believe that the most powerful roadmap home to your authentic self, the most powerful work that addresses and heals that on a deep core level is based on the 12 steps of recovery which bridges the gap with metaphysical principles, metaphysical te teachings, ancient, ancient teachings. And we put those together and we create a complete spiritual practice which gets you home. And this practice, this process, not only addresses the typical addictions that we're familiar with, like drugs and alcohol and food and sex and porn and all that kind of stuff that we're so familiar with, but it has the power to address those more subtle 
under the hood, insidious, uh, emotional addictions to shame, to trauma, to our belief system, to unworthiness, to avoidance, procrastination, and distraction. And at least, and especially distraction to social media, right? I mean, we've, we're all guilty of that in some form or another, being obsessed and distracted by social media or the media itself, distracted by Netflix, right? Where we, where we, we make an agreement, we're just gonna click on one movie, we're just gonna watch one movie, but instead of clicking on a movie, we click on a series. And we all know that every series or each series has 13 to 18 episodes. So we click on that series and we come to three or four days later, numbed out, dumbed out and zoned out and disconnected from home. And we promise we'll never do it again. And then we do it again. That's what addiction looks like is when we make an agreement, when we make a promise to never do that thing again, to never make a decision from a place of unworthiness again, to never feel that emotion again. And before the commitment is even out of our mouths, we're already right back into that same pattern again. So the roadmap home to your authentic self, I call this work soul recovery. And I had to find a way to bridge the gap. I had to find the tools that could actually get me home. Because let's not get it twisted. It's not the tools that heal you. It's home that is the healer itself. But there is a roadmap in the tools that are practical, one step after the other, that can bring you home. And I remember 34 years ago when I had my first experience of home, God. I was sitting in the back of a taxi, demanding that he take me to the drug dealer's house so that I could get just one more hit. And instead of doing as I demanded, the cab driver turned to face me in the back seat and he looked deeply into my eyes and he said, Esther. No, he didn't say Esther, he didn't know my name. He said, young lady, Please don't kill yourself today. Now in that moment when he said that, I wasn't interested in not killing myself that day. I just wanted to get high. But something happened. Something happened. A miracle took place in that moment because as he looked into my eyes, the veil of illusion that I'd been carrying all those years of separation parted. And I caught a glimpse. I caught a glimpse of myself. I caught a glimpse of freedom. I caught a glimpse of relief. I caught a glimpse of ecstasy and bliss. I'd never felt that before. It was God. It was the truth of my beingness. And then it ended. And it changed me forever. That was my last day of getting high. But even more importantly than that, I became homesick for that experience over and over again. I was homesick for home and it became my passion to find that place and to live from that place as much as I could and to teach others how to come home. So how do we come home? when we've run away, when we've got lost in consciousness, how do we come home? Well, four of the steps on the roadmap, I'd like to just briefly go over them with you right now. The first step on the roadmap to home is admitting personal powerlessness. Yes, and I know in our new thought movement and unity, admitting personal powerlessness it's actually kind of gotten a bad rap because we believe that admitting powerlessness is affirming something into our lives that we don't want to affirm. And I understand that.
but we're not affirming powerlessness. We are acknowledging that the part of our ego, the part of our minds that created the problem in the first place is not the part of our minds that can heal it. Fear cannot heal you. Worry cannot heal you. The illusion of lack and limitation cannot heal you. The illusion of unworthiness cannot heal you. No matter how much you obsess over the problem, you are not a vibrational match for the solution. So the first step is admitting personal powerlessness, which Jesus the Christ, I believe, is the first one that admitted powerlessness when he stated, I of myself can do nothing. I of myself can do nothing. I just want you to just take a breath right now. And think about all of the things that you're trying to be in control of. Everything that you're trying to fix and figure out right now. And I just want you to just say, I of myself can do nothing. I of myself can't do it. I of myself can't figure it out. And then I want you to take a deep breath. And when you exhale, I want you to say, yay. Yay, I don't have to fix it. I don't have to do it. I don't have to figure it out. And now you have gained access to the power. When you get out of the way and when you release control and when you admit personal powerlessness, you now have, you now have access to the infinite power that is within you, that is you, that is the truth of you, that can do for you as you, which you have never been able to do for yourself. And this power is easy. I like to call this power. It's like God is cool. God is easy. God is love. Oh, and life is so much easier when I get out of the way and allow it to have its way. Step two, came to believe that a power greater than myself can restore me to sanity. From a metaphysical perspective, what this means is that the power greater than myself is my real self. There's not a power outside of myself that's going to do anything for me, that's going to restore me to anything. It is a power within me that I am reconnecting to through this roadmap that is restoring me back to my original nature of wholeness. I like to tell people you may have been born into dysfunction. You may have been born into a vibration of forgetfulness, but you were created out of greatness. You were created out of wholeness. You were created out of the one power, the one presence, and the one life. And what that second step of recovery means from a metaphysical perspective is you are being restored back to the beginning, back to who you really are, back to who you've always been before you forgot. Yes? And then step three, I'm making a decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand God. I'm turning my self-will, the part of myself that keeps thinking the same thoughts, doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. I'm turning my will. I'm turning my entire beingness, all of my affairs, my life, my body, my finances, my work, the world, everything. I'm turning it over to the care of God as I understand God. And I like to share with people, and I also say this for myself too, if the God of your understanding is not expressing as peace, as love, as harmony, as abundance, as well-beingness in, as, and through your life. Then it's time to get a new God or it's time to get a new understanding because you are here to remember who you are. You are here to be well. You are here to thrive. You are here to be in peace that passeth understanding. And then step four, is all about self-forgiveness, the forgiveness of others, and compassionate accountability, where we take responsibility for our mistakes, but not from a place of shame, but from a place of growth and the willingness to grow and become even more of who we really are as an expression of life. 
And so this afternoon, I will be going into more detail about forgiveness in the workshop. I'll be facilitating the Healing Code of Forgiveness, Freedom from Racial Trauma, or any trauma, resentment, or unforgiveness that you are holding onto in your heart, which is the number one cause, resentment, unhealed trauma, shame, unworthiness. Those are the causes of of the lack of access to your higher self, to your authentic self. So I'm inviting you to get back home. Home is your true identity. Home is your divine birthplace, your divine birthright. If you recall, in the movie The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy had a dream, or was it a nightmare? But she was lost. But when she awakened, she realized that she'd never left home at all. She just had a dream. She learned a lot from that dream, but it was a dream. She woke up safely in her own bed. And so this work that I'm introducing you to, soul recovery, it's not about getting you somewhere. It's about revealing that infinite something, that divine something that is already there within you. It is called God. It is called life, universal presence, whatever it is that you want to call it. I call it home. And beloved, I got to tell you, there is no peace like it. There is no abundance like it. There is no wisdom like it. There is absolutely no place like home. Peace and blessings. Blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. That was wonderful. Let's anchor this message with my life is a prayer. A desperate call with tears that fall on men and me. But you're breathing out and breathing in. It's God in me that lets and breathes my trust and friend. My life. My thoughts are words that God is saying. My laughter is the sound of angels playing. My life is a prayer that God is praying. I had the chance to move and sway. God leads the way in my life's dance. What if I be without a doubt? No need to fear. God is right here within. Without my life is a prayer that God is praying. My thoughts are words that God is saying. My laughter is the sound of angels playing. My life is a prayer that God is praying. Oh. Oh.
What did you take away from this presentation by Esther Nicholson? I'd love to hear from you. So let us know either in the live chat or in the comment section below. Let us know what you thought or perhaps a spiritual principle or an aha moment that you had. That'd be absolutely great. So let's sing this song. Get Out of the Way by Eddie Watkins Jr. and Emilio Zaris. Just release and let it go You don't even have to think about it no more Get out of the way Get out of the way Get out of the way and let God do His thing You look like the weight of the world's on your back Just take a deep breath and cut yourself some slack All that drama ain't good for you to change what is if you want it to get out of the way 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 and let God do it you enjoyed today's presentation. I hope that you did. And I'd like to introduce now Reverend Pat Ball to take care of our prayer section of our service. So here is Pat Ball. Thank you so much, Reverend Ann and Emilio and our wonderful speakers. We are so blessed. And remember, we are here to pray with you a prayer of celebration or gratitude, a prayer of support, anything that's on your mind, we will hold that prayer in our hearts for you. And now let's close with a prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds you, I am the light. The love of God enfolds you, I am the love. The power of God protects you, I am the power. The presence of God watches over you. I am the presence. Wherever you are, God is. Wherever I am, God is. 
and all is well. Amen. Who are you going to focus on now? Why don't you focus on Pat and she can introduce the song. Okay. And then you can say goodbye to everybody at the end. Okay. And now let's close our service. Sing together, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that is meant to be with God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment, live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Oh, see you next week, everybody. And remember, we love you. Bye now. Bye.